So we know as trauma survivors that mental health therapy can really help us. And there's different modalities and types and versions of therapy. And one of those is EMDR. I'm so happy today that we have Stacy Fish. She's a licensed mental health therapist with us. And she is going to explain how amazing EMDR is and what it can do. And I know a lot of people kind of are confused by it at times and say, how does that work? Well, that's why we have Stacy here. So Stacy, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So can you go ahead and explain to us what you do, what is EMDR and how do you use it in your office? Awesome. Yeah. So EMDR is a type of trauma, um, a modality of trauma counseling. And what you do is um, there's an eight step phase of EMDR. So there's the eight step process. You come in, um, usually we start with a memory of some sort uh, attached to something that's disturbing like a trauma. Um, we also connect that with a cognition, um, a negative cognition. And we will start there, we'll start processing. Um, there's different ways of processing with EMDR. There's eye movement where you're using your fingers back and forth. There is headsets that you can have um, the sound of beeps in your ears. And then there's also tappers. You can also tap on your legs. So there's different ways to process with EMDR. I prefer, um, so when you come into my office, um, I use the headphones and the tappers. Or if you're online, we'll use headphones and self-tap. Um, and the reason I like that is because I um, use a lot of uh, meditation in my practice. And so I think of um, EMDR like a deep meditation. With EMDR, you're not going to be like a traditional talk therapy where you're in the frontal lobe of your brain. You're going to go into the back part of your brain where your memories are stored, and you're going to reprocess through those memories. So it's a little bit different than traditional talk therapy, which is great um, because there is some really um, great scientific proof that there's more healing being done or quicker healing being done with the EMDR process. So you're saying that they go back into like the subconscious and they're going back into these things that they may not even know bothers them or the things that are hurting them that they may not even remember. Yeah. So with traditional talk therapy, you're working with um, coping through the triggers and with EMDR, you're actually in the back part of your brain and you're reconnecting um, the synapses back in the back part of your brain. So you're reprocessing and storing those memories in a different space so that it is actually processing over. So EMDR is very much like REM sleep where your eyes are moving back and forth. And what we do when we're in REM is we're processing through our day, our memories, all the things that have happened and we're placing them into our long-term memory. And so like little storage compartments. And so with EMDR um, and trauma, sometimes those things don't get stored away correctly. And so we're reprocessing and storing them into a space where they're not gonna trigger as often. You're gonna be aware, um, the memories are still there. You're just not being triggered and um, it's not bringing up those um, anxiety responses or this depressive responses. So you can focus on what they feel physically and mentally through that EMDR. So you can see, hey, this is what my brain does. This is what my body does when I remember this trauma. Absolutely. So we do focus a lot on body responses and what comes up in your body. Um, and then at the end of every EMDR session, we always bring some awareness back to your body because our body keeps score um, and our body stores trauma. And when we release that trauma, sometimes it comes back up. So I've actually had people that have physical responses in their body that when we're done with EMDR, we release that through like a meditative space, um, a body scan, and we let it go. And, and it actually processes out of your body. That's incredible. I've had something similar to EMDR, which was called art therapy. And it was very similar where um, my therapist put her hand in front of my face. And I, I can't even tell you <laughs> that day, the, well, the few times I did it, I let go of things that were like haunting me for years. And I was able to like, just walk through and release, but I would have never just been able to do that on my own. Absolutely. Yeah. And ART is actually um, came off of, or was made from um, EMDR. So it's a piece of EMDR. 
So um, there's a lot of different therapies out there right now, like brain spotting, ART, that are um, a lot uh, really connected back to EMDR. And so they're just pieces of EMDR. And so EMDR is a very similar process. Um, and a lot of it is actually with, with EMDR is actually allowing yourself to heal on your own. So I'm just a guide in the process. And so you're actually going through your memories, reprocessing, and everything is connected to whatever your thoughts and your memories are. And I think it's important to note that it's not saying that these are better than talk therapy. I think that I had to have both together. And, you know, and I know that people that are licensed like you do both and you do it well. We tend to have nightmares or dreams about certain things over and over. And we don't realize like it's kind of similar to that where you're going back into that REM sleep. It would be easy to think like, you know, some of these dreams we have, it's because we're storing stuff in our uh, back of our brain. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you actually said that because um, dreams are a big part of EMDR therapy, actually. And so um, the only homework that I usually assign with my clients is to go back and um, and just keep a dream diary it is the way our subconscious talks to us through our dreams. Our mind will actually tell us, okay, this is what I need to process uh, on our next therapy session and or or there's more healing that gets done or takes place after EMDR through your dream work and so um, it is a process where I always let um, clients know like keep track of your dreams see what comes up for you because your mind is still healing and you can do that through your dreams after EMDR but also it can present new ideas for ongoing therapy. So speaking of that, how many sessions do you think that there needs to be done before it can be a healing that is really, uh, you know, significant in somebody's life? It's a great question. So um, it absolutely depends on the person and how they process and the situation and how deep the, the trauma is. So I've seen people that come into my office and have immediate relief within two sessions because there's always an additional initial session where we'll do some resourcing and make sure that you're in a safe space and able to process. And then the second session, I can usually get people in and, and have them feel some, some relief from the trauma that's happening in their lives or has happened. Um, but then there's also some people that, um, like I said, that dream process where something else will come up. And so it kind of leads them on a journey. So then it could be a, a few sessions before, um, you know, they see some real deep healing or they, um, they're feeling it in a better space. And do you recommend a certain amount of time after the trauma to do the EMDR? Um, actually, it's best if you hit it right away. So mm -hmm. if it's active and ready, I mean, like if you just went through a trauma, it's really good to get in there right away because you can process through very quickly. Um, so they get, we get the best results if we get it, we hit it right away. But, um, but I've been processing with people that are processing their um, inner child wounds from, you know, when they were very young, or there are trainings out there that you can process through like, when you're in vitro, like in, in the womb still. And so, um, so there is some, because there is generational trauma that they're finding out about right now. And so there is some healing with that as well that we can do with EMDR. That's super interesting. I've heard that, that if like the mother was going through something when they were pregnant with the baby or if the grandmother even. And so that's super interesting. I know I'm always like, a, I love to learn and I love to like, you know, I'm an, I'm a self proclaimed nerd. And so I'm always interested in hearing more about that stuff. That's interesting. You see just some really emotional times when they're doing this. Are they getting like physically sick? Is it something that if somebody goes to do, what should they prepare for to, to feel that way they know what they're in for? So usually um, preparation, I will say to just, um, just be ready to feel like my office is a safe space. I accept any and all emotions. Like I have tissues everywhere. Um, and just, just be um, open and willing to release emotions because that's where the best healing comes is when we're able to fully release. And so if you're in my office and something comes up, then you just let it, let it out. And I always ask my clients, just let it out because it's going to heal the best. Yeah. It's kind of like a wound, you know, it needs to 
be gross before it gets better <laughs> and exactly. that you can't just you know let it you have to let it get it out or else it's just going to infect you and so yeah it's definitely important i tell everybody through the trauma survivors guide to life abundantly that there it's a crazy ugly journey it's a beautiful journey but it's also ugly at times but it's necessary to heal and those things are necessary even though they're not fun in the moment but it, the relief you feel is I mean, I, I wish I could bottle up in a, like a jar and sell that feeling because it is so good to let it go. And it doesn't mean you're not going to have to reprocess it. Um, and that's my next question. Do you see people that have to come back multiple times or is it something that I know you said that a lot of them heal, but is it something that if we do this, should we continue to do it throughout the years to come? So I haven't met ever met someone that hasn't been through trauma, right? And life just, that's what they, it hands us, right? We all have our own traumas and, and trauma happens over and over again, unfortunately. Maybe not the deep trauma, but like daily life struggles and, um, and little traumas that come up along the way. Um, so once you process, um, in most cases, it doesn't come back up. It, it stores away in the back. It's where it's supposed to be. You might still um, be aware of it and it still might affect you in some ways, but it's not going to trigger you. You're not going to have the consistent um, disturbances in your body. Um, but life does happen. And sometimes you do need like, a, a, I, and I think just like doctors, mental health therapists are, are um beneficial for life. Right. So, um, so I would say absolutely. Like I would suggest, um, revisiting your counselor every so often to do like a maintenance, but, or if something else happens in your life and something comes up, yeah, you might have to come back. But if it's specifically related to the trauma that we're working on, um, that doesn't usually come back up again. Usually we can work through it, be aware that it's happening, but it's not affecting your day to day. That's good to know. I uh, I know that sometimes with certain trauma that I've been through, I have to reheal when like, you know, when you become a mom, then you have to reheal or when you get in a new relationship, then you may have to re So I know that sometimes it's not even that the trauma is, you know, necessarily affecting you in the same way. It just happens now. Right. Differently. And so, uh, yeah, I would, I, I should probably get back in there and do some more because I think that it's like maintenance on a car. I feel like everybody needs a little maintenance sometimes mentally and with trauma. And um, I'm, I, I'm that person that's like, you know, I'd rather get it out and deal with it. I don't like the way it feels in the moment, but I'd rather deal with it and let it go than to go years like I did in the past with the same thing, just pushed and shoved away. It does not go away. No, no. Yeah. It's true. It's good to get out, talk about it and release it. And if you can find a therapist that does one of those um, EMDR, ART, brain spotting, and I think that it's, it's super beneficial. So if somebody wanted to come see you and get EMDR done in your office, where would be a good place to find you? Like your website, um, where are you located? Things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So my website is balancedcw.com. So, um, and I'm located off Tampa Road in Oldsmar, um, so central to the top of the bay. Um, and I also have a Psychology Today profile, and I'm listed with um, Andrea.org, which is um, a great space to find an EMDR counselor. And you said something about virtual. Do you offer virtual visits? I do. I offer in-person and virtual visits, um, and I do provide EMDR on both, um, both modalities. Okay. So, and is that for anybody in the country or is that something that you'd have to be local? So you do have to be local to Florida. I'm licensed in Florida, in the state of Florida. Um, hopeful that the compact goes through soon so that I could be within the U.S., but at this point, just in Florida. Well, if you're in Florida, now you know somebody that you can get this done and, and she's obviously very skilled in it and very knowledgeable. I'm so appreciative, Stacey, that you came on to share about this. I am so fascinated with it. Like I said, I've had a little bit of experience with it and I cannot tell anybody enough. You're going to think it's crazy at first, but it works. So definitely try it. Don't knock it till you try it. So I want to thank you, Stacy, for coming on. And if you need help with your trauma, reach out to Stacy on her website, or you can reach out to us at the Trauma Survivor's Guide to Life Abundantly, and we will try to get you a resource in your area. 
Have a wonderful day.